Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we are going to focus on quartiles or data handling. That is about dividing your data into quarters. And those will be four equal parts. Let's say for an example, we have a rectangular shape. Let me draw a rectangular shape here that we want to divide into four equal parts. So the first thing we will do is to split it into two halves. So we're going to have one over two here and one over two here. And when we add these two, they give us a whole number, which is a one. So now after we've divided this into two equal halves, we have to divide the first half into two halves as well and divide the second half into two halves again. So here we, we will have four quarters, which will give us a total of one as well. But the first thing we did was to divide the whole shape into a half so that we can get a half. So getting the first half or the center of the first half, it's going to be easier. So now going back to our data set, this data set has got a total of nine numbers and we want to get four quarters out of this data set. So the first thing we're going to do is to get the center or the middle of this data set, which is at eight. So if you check number eight here, it's going to be our median, which is quartile two, it's eight. So after we have found our median, we have to check the first half. And looking at the first half, we have to find the middle for the first half. And where is the middle for the first half? It's between your four and your five. So between these two numbers, somewhere between these two numbers, you're gonna have your first half, which you, the, the, the middle, which is your quartile one. So quartile one, it's going to be four plus five, and then you divide them by two, and then you get your four comma five. So if you check here, you have got two numbers here on this side, and then you've got two numbers there. And this qualifies the fact that this is the center of the first half. Now coming to the second half, you want to find the center or the middle for this second half. It's between your 13 and your 17, which will be your quartile three. This 13 plus 17, you add them and divide by two, and then you will get your 15. So if you're gonna calculate your interquartile range, your interquartile range is the difference between your quartile three and your quartile one. So what is your quartile three? It's 15 and then your quartile one, it's 4,5. So when you subtract the two, you get your 10,5. So moving on, let's say we have uh, an even data set, one that has got um, 10 numbers. The one, the previous one had nine numbers. So this is an even data set. It has got 10 numbers. So we're gonna do the same thing. It's a similar method. We check the center for this data set it's between, it's between your eight and 12. This is Q2, so eight plus 12. So remember, you need to first find the center for the whole data set, that is your Q2 or your median. And then in this case, it's gonna be 10. Eight plus 12 divided by two, it's gonna be 10. And then again, I come and check the first half. This is my first half. And I look at the center, try to find the center for the first half, it's at five. So at, at five, it's Q1. Why do I say at five is the center? Because it leaves two numbers on its right hand side. 
and then two numbers on the left hand side. So Q1 is going to be my five. And then I come and check the second half here and try to find the center. It's at 17 and that will be your quartile three. So again, if you're gonna calculate your interquartile range, it's your IQR equals to the highest quartile minus the lowest quartile. So some make a mistake of mm, subtracting the quartile three minus quartile two or quartile two minus quartile uh, one, that is incorrect. It is the highest quartile, which is Q3 minus the lowest quartile, which is Q1. So in this case, Q3 is 17 and then Q1, it's five. So it's 17 minus five, it's your 12. So you can also try to find the values that you can place on your box and whisker diagram. And then now, let's say I try to draw a box and whisker, but in the exam, they will never ask you to draw a box and whisker diagram for maths literacy. They draw it for you. Let's say, let me try to label them here. The points that are key. So at A, it's your minimum. At A, it's your minimum. And then at B, it's your quartile one. At C, it's your quartile two. And then at D, it's your quartile three. And then at E, it's your maximum. So looking at the data set that we just dealt with here for 10 numbers, our minimum will be two. This two is gonna be our minimum. So I'll take that two and put it here. And then our B, it's quartile one, which we got as five. And then our C, it's quartile two, which was 10. And then quartile three, it's 17. And then our maximum, going back to the data set, find our maximum to be 22. So 22 will be your maximum. So when you look at this box and whisker diagram, it consists of five numbers. And these numbers are called or are summarized as the five number summary. So when they talk about the five number summary, they refer to the values which are represented in the box and whisker diagram. That is your minimum, quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, and then your maximum.